how to read the textual apparatus of a Greek New Testament using the Nestle Aland 28th edition at Ephesians 1.1 and focusing on the problem of NFSO or in Ephesus. Um, the first thing to notice about NFSO is that it's surrounded by a, a few different symbols. The square and the backslash are actually related to one another. They surround a phrase or at least more than one word that has been omitted in some witnesses. So if you ever get the omission of just one word, it'll be a small circle rather than a square. And the square is always followed by the backslash to show you what words are in question for a possible omission. Um, and then the other symbols, the square brackets here, aren't necessarily tied to every textual variant or every problem. They're just showing you that the editors are unsure. There's some uncertainty about these words because it's a pretty tricky textual problem. So if we trace the square uh, down to the footnotes, we'll see it here. Um, in this sample, I've excerpted a little bit from the apparatus. I'm not showing you the evidence for all the other text problems in verse 1. So uh, the dot, dot, dot so it shows you I'm just going to um, NFSO specifically. And so the Nestle Aland gives you the support for the omission first. Um, and the, the first thing to show up for the omission is P46 or Papyrus 46, which uh, very early witness to the Pauline epistles, it lacks NFSO. It just goes right from tois usin to chi pistois. Then uh, Codex Sinaiticus or Aleph, and it's an asterisk, which means that it's the original hand or the original writing of the scribe. Um, and that implies that there's going to be a corrected version uh, later in the equation somewhere. Um, and then the next one is B or Vaticanus. Sometimes you'll see it as 0, 3 written. And again, it's also an uncorrected reading. It's the original hand of the scribe at the time of writing in the 4th century. And then you get two uh, minuscules, uh, 6 and 1739. And then what's left here is um, a reference to uh, Marcion, the second century heretic, who is a witness to the omission of NFSO. But we don't have his works directly. We have them mediated through Tertullian and Epiphanius. Um, and that's what the T and the E stand for. Um, so if you look at the introduction to the Nestle Alon, you can find page 81 that specifies we have a witness to Marcion through Tertullian and Epiphanius. And he is a uh, early testimony of the uh, omission of NFSO. Then they give you a CF inscription. Uh, this links us up to the line just above where it says inscriptio or inscription. That means like the title at the beginning of a book. Um, there is a replacement of the title. So rather than to the Ephesians, we have to the Laodiceans. And then vel means or the spelling is slightly different um, in another version, but it's the same idea. It's that according to Marcion, uh, the title to the book is actually to the Laodiceans, not to the Ephesians. So this little note here is just sending you back up to that related textual issue. But again, that Marcion witness comes through Tertullian and Epiphanius rather than uh, by himself. The broken vertical line means we've stopped talking about the evidence for the omission of NFSO, and now we're going to uh, discuss the evidence for what's printed in the text, TXT. And so the evidence that supports the presence of NFSO um, is the uh, corrected version of Codex Sinaiticus or Olive. Now, if you look on page um, 59 in the introduction, you'll see that they give you actually a date for the corrector of Sinaiticus that they label 2, and they put it in the 7th century, roughly. Uh, similar is B, or Vaticanus, the corrected reading. This is not the um, asterisk reading. It's not the original hand. The original scribe, it's a later corrector, has 
um, added in an FSO. And um, again, on page 59, uh, Vaticanus with a two refers to a scribal correction in either the sixth or the seventh century. Uh, other witnesses are A and D, F, G, K, L, P, C. Um, all of these are majuscules that um, support the inclusion of uh, NFSO up in the text. Uh, one more majuscule is 0278. And then what follows to the end of the line are all minuscules or minuscules, uh, a whole list of them. On the final line, you get 2464 and then the majority M, which means the 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 great majority of Greek witnesses altogether um, have in FSO or in Ephesus. Um, careful with the last three here. Um, L-A-T-T means something specific, not just Latin. But if you go to page 69 of the introduction, it tells you that L-A-T-T means the entire Latin tradition. So there are various categories of Latin tradition, the Vulgate, and Old Latin, and so on. L-A-T-T means the entire Latin tradition. Similar with S-Y, there are varieties of uh, versions of the Syriac, but S-Y means the entire Syriac tradition, and you can see that on page 70. And then C-O, once again, is specific. It means all the Coptic witnesses, um, uh, not just certain uh, dialects of Coptic, and you can see that on page 74 of the introduction. So just to uh, summarize and clarify, in Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, when we focus on this particular textual problem, uh, we see that it deals with the omission of more than one word, and the editors are marking the fact that there is some uncertainty about the, uh, the real wording here. They can't quite make a firm decision, and so there's some uncertainty marked by the brackets. Um, there is um, some support for the omission of that phrase, and it's very early um, uh, support for the omission with papyri, with Marcion, with Olive and B. Um, and then the everything after that gives the support for the inclusion of those uh, words in the text, and um, uh, that includes um, all of this material here.